بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, welcome in uh, today in uh, Wednesday 18th of January 2023 and this new meeting of Egyptian Society of Nephrology and Transplantation CME meetings uh, online CME meetings and today is our uh, today date with uh, kidney journals updates journal clubs uh, to uh, introduce some of the hot topics and uh, highlight some of the hot topics, uh, recent topics in the Frosh. We are honored today and a pleasure to have a great moderator, Professor Said Khamis, Professor of Nephrology, Manufaya University, the head of Nephrology Dialysis Unit in Manufaya University. And Professor Said is well known to us and by his scientific activity all through the year and all through Egypt and international world, uh, activity in my, by uh, discussions, uh, sharing in conferences, uh, lectures, and supplying us with almost all updated topics. And our speaker today is Professor Ahmad Abdelwahab, Associate Professor of uh, Internal Medicine and Nephrology in Mansoura University, uh, and the editor of uh, many hot topic journals and reviewer in many international journals worldwide. Uh, I will leave the floor to Professor Said to introduce Professor Ahmed and welcome him. And we are waiting for uh, these hot topics and expecting a discussion, a very hot discussion about these recent topics in nephrology. Welcome to Professor Said, welcome Professor Ahmed. And please, Professor Said, take the floor. Thank you, Professor Yasser, for this uh, nice introduction. Uh, today, it will be, inshallah, a fruitful meeting. Uh, and uh, we shall uh, hear from Dr. Ahmad Abdul Wahab. He's an assistant professor of nephrology, Mansoura University. For me, he's a full professor since many years ago. Uh, as a level in scientific activity. In the, in the meantime, he is a very nice man and very active man. And uh, I call him always is a good teacher, uh, Professor Ahmad Abdul Wahab. Uh, today, inshallah, we shall uh, uh, hear from him uh, three topics from uh, regarding the uh, Nephrology Journal Club. All the three topics are uh, very recent by the end of maybe a couple of months ago, just published in uh, very reputable journals, in nephrology journals. The first topic is uh, the association of vancomycin plus bibracillin tazobactam with early changes in creatinine versus statin, statin C in critically ill adults, a prospective cohort study. The question will be raised in this uh, topic is it sodotoxicity from these medications? I mean the elevation of creatinine, or it is true AKR? That is the question will be answered by Professor Abdul Wahab, inshallah. The second topic is uh, Teresa Bataid. Uh, it is a new drug, uh, what's called twin creatinine. It is uh, uh, agonist for GLB-1 and GIB. Uh, and uh, he will tell us, is it, beneficial or good for prevention of CKD or not, this is the second issue. The second, the third topic uh, regarding tonight or this evening will be regarding the balanced solution versus saline or normal saline to reduce the AKI. This is the dilemma of IV fluid in nephrology field. Sometimes they go to the crystalloid, sometimes they go to, they recommend the uh, uh, colloids and so on, uh, and uh, sometimes they say uh, balanced solutions, and uh, again back to the uh, the saline. So we shall hear from Professor Abdul Wahab to conclude this uh, debatable issue, inshallah. Please, Professor Abdul Wahab. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salatu wassalamu ala ashraf al Dr. Yasser, Dr. Saeed, uh, my elegant professors, Thanks for this uh, great introduction. Uh, I hope, inshallah, we will cover uh, these three topics uh, uh, today, inshallah. Uh, uh, my first uh, uh, talk will be about um, a, a recent publication 
regarding the use of what we know as drug-induced kidney disease. I called it false alarm. Why false alarm? We are going to see. The title of the article was Association of Vancomycin plus Piprocillin Tazobactam with Early Changes in Creatinine versus Cystatin C in Critically Ill Adults, a prospective cohort study. The idea of the authors of this article, um, they discussed that uh, in many observational studies, uh, they found that vancomycin plus piprocillin tazobactam was associated with uh, AKI and reported to induce AKI. Vancomycin is known to, may, to cause ATI due to acute tubular necrosis or due to crystal, uh, crystal deposition inside the tubules of the kidney, while tazobactam, uh, piprocillin tazobactam, was not reported to cause uh, to cause such an injury. The uh, the idea of uh, the authors uh, or the uh, hypothesis of the authors um, uh, they hypothesized that vancomycin plus uh, piperacillin tazobactam compete with creatinine for the organic acid transporters one and three inside the tubules of the kidney, and that the increase in creatinine. Uh, in these patients and the definition of AKI based creatinine based AKI definitions is mainly due to uh, com uh, competing with creatinine uh, on the organic acid transporters in the tubules of the kidney, what we call as pseudo increase, not actual injury uh, or pseudo AKI, not true AKI. For that, they uh, compared uh, or they hypothesized that if the injury to the kidney is actual, there will be an elevation of another marker uh, uh, in the kidney, which is cystatin C, that is freely filterable by the glomeruli, short, uh, shorter half-life than creatinine. So uh, uh, cystatin C is known to increase uh, uh, when there is AKI before creatinine changes, especially in cases of uh, sepsis or drug-induced kidney disease, uh, kidney injury. That's why they hypothesized that if they convert... Uh, <laughs> if they compared um, uh, two groups of, uh, of patients receiving vancomycin with uh, piperacillin and tazobactam regarding the increase in creatinine versus cystatin C, if they found that there is only increase in creatinine without uh, a corresponding increase in cystatin C or serum urea in, in, uh, as, a secondary, uh, as a secondary marker, this means that the increase in serum creatinine in these patients was not due to actual kidney injury, but it is due to uh, competition of creatinine um, uh, on the organic acid transporter system in the tubules of the kidney. They found that in most of the literature, the increase in serum creatinine occurred in the second day of the administration of drugs. That's why they, the uh, levels of uh, cystatin C uh, was withdrawn in the uh, second day. For that, uh, they went th through the, the MISI uh, 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 database. MISI is an abbreviation of molecular epidemiology of sepsis in ICU. They found the uh, number of patients uh, to be about 3,000, those receiving the uh, desired uh, combination antibiotic about 2,500, those receiving the, uh, this combination within 48 hours of ICU admission was 2,000, uh, and those who are receiving were receiving this, uh, this combination for more than 42 hours were 1,000 and about 300. After exclusion of patients with end-stage kidney disease or with baseline AKI or on hemodialysis, uh, the two groups remaining were the vancomycin, uh, piperacillin, tazobactam, uh, about 297 patients in comparison to another beta-lactam antibiotic, which is cefibim, vancomycin plus cefibim. Cefibim was chosen because in most of the series of sepsis, it was effective in, in combination with uh, Cystatin C was measured in 72 patients so, uh, in the uh, vancomycin, piperacillin, tazobactam group 
while it was measured in 120 patients in the other group. Uh, in this slide, we are going to see that we have two scenarios, either the patient started vancomycin, then a beta-lactam was added, or he started beta-lactam and then vancomycin was added in panel A. In panel B, we are going to see that the admission criteria and the days of withdrawal. Uh, the index date means the day of ad, uh, admission to ICU. Uh, cystatin C should have been withdrawn in the 24 hours previous to admission to ICU. Beta-lactam and dovancomycin should uh, start within 48 hours uh, from admission to ICU. Then after two to three days, another sample of cystatin C will be withdrawn to compare with uh, serum creatinine. The, uh, in the lower part of the, of the slide, we are going to see that uh, the uh, uh, variables measured in both groups regarding demographic data, admission to admission characteristics. Uh, we are going to see the Apache scoring, mean arterial blood pressure uh, regarding the kidney function, either by serum creatinine index GFR, according to different stages of GFR, the infection criteria, the comorbidities associated in both groups, and even the medication which were given in both groups. I did not uh, write the, the numbers, but they were uh, matched in both groups. Um, so there was no difference regarding the administration admission criteria to ICU or the uh, medications administered or uh, kidney function or infection. They were compatible, compatible in both groups. If we look to table number four, and I, I only picked up this table, this table summarizes the, the finding of this study. In the vancomycin uh, cefibim group versus vancomycin peprocillin uh, tazobactam group, uh, and to just five or the confounders, uh, they have done what is called as inverse probability uh, weighting, which is uh, uh, abbreviated as IPTW. Uh, this is a type of statistics to um, uh, remove the confounders which may uh, interfere with the results in both groups and to make both groups uh, nearly compatible to each other. Uh, the outcomes of the study was the occurrence of AKI within 14 days or through 14 days of follow-up. The second outcome is uh, uh, which type of stage of AKI. The third parameter is AKI requiring, requiring dialysis uh, within 14 days. The fourth diameter was a parameter was the mortality at 30 days. If we look to the comparison between both groups, we are going to see that the, they were comparable uh, and the crude ratio and even after uh, the uh, using uh, the uh, inverse uh, probability treatment, there, was there were no difference and differences regarding the four parameters of the study. And the authors concluded that vancomycin, peprocillin, tazobactam was associated with creatinine-defined AKI, but not with actually changes in the alternative kidney biomarkers, namely cystatin C and urea, or mortality, supporting the hypothesis that vancomycin, peprocillin, tazobactam effects on creatinine represent pseudotoxicity or just competition between uh, uh, vancomycin, tazobactam on the organic acid transporter of, uh, uh, of the tubules of the kidney. Another uh, uh, information supporting this hypothesis is that uh, drug competition with creatinine usually elevates serum creatinine between 0.2 to 0.5 milligrams per deciliter, which uh, Co, uh, goes with the first stage of um, Kidigo classification of AKI. And that's why in most of the ob observational studies, they found that the, the use of vancomycin, peprocillin, tazobactam was associated with the occurrence of AKI Kidigo stage one. The association with Kidigo stage two and three was not reported in, in, in um, many uh, articles, uh, even one or two, as, as I remember here. Yeah. Um, uh, to go for the same issue, we have what is called as drug-induced innocent creatinine elevation. Innocent means that there is no actual injury to the kidney. 
uh, uh, many drugs can cause innocent elevation of creatinine, causing false alarm. We are going to rush. Away. يعني, we should say the kidneys, the kidneys was injured, were injured due to the use of some drugs. Uh, some drugs uh, that are present in the left side of the panel, like cimetidine, which is not present in the market now, famotidine, ranitidine, trimethoprime, pyrimethamine, salicylates, uh, calcitriol, tetracycline. These drugs compete with the tubular excretion, uh, secretion of creatinine, causing mild increases of serum creatinine without actually harming the kidneys. Other drugs present in the second column, like cefoxetine, cephalosporins, lidocaine, dopamine, dobutamine, many drugs uh, which may we use in our clinical practice may interfere with the two types of um, uh, laboratory measurements of creatinine, the enzymatic way and the Jave's way. That's why. Um, when we deal with a rise of serum creatinine in a patient, we should uh, check for the six hours of drug-induced nephrotoxicity. Is there any risk for drug-induced nephrotoxicity like old age, diabetes, previous CKD, long history of exposure, known drug toxicity, previous CKD, previous AKI, uh, concomitant use of many nephrotoxic drugs, uh, the recognition the actual recognition of uh, uh, a definite uh, kidney injury, not a pseudotoxicity, the response of us to stop uh, immediately the offending drug, to go for renal support, rehabilitation, and to go in depth research uh, in, in such uh, uh, an important topic. Uh, now I'm going to go for the, the second topic today, um, and I titled it, Why to Checkmate Once While You Can Do It uh, Double. If we look to the board, we are going to, to see that the Black King is double checked with the queen, with the knight and the bishop at the same time. And even if the king tried to escape, it's going to be also checkmated by uh, the rook at the uh, bottom of the checkboard, uh, chessboard. Um, uh, I chose, uh, I've chosen this, um, um, this title and this, uh, this picture to express my, um, um, to entitle my second article. Uh, we all know incretins. Incretins uh, were discovered or uh, were introduced to the market, I think, 2004. Incretins are substances secreted from the GIT to regulate insulin secretion in response to, to me. Um, we have two types, famous types of incretins. Uh, which known as the GLB-1, glucagonal-like peptide 1, and GIP, uh, glucose-dependent insulinotropic peptide. These two uh, incretins are secreted in response to, to diet. Uh, they aim to uh, regulate insulin uh, synthesis and secretion from the beta cells of pancreas, uh, plus uh, other actions like regulation of glucagon secretion, uh, lipolysis, or um, um, uh, lipogenesis. Uh, decreased satiety, decreased acid secretion, central action. So many actions are done by these two uh, uh, enzymes. These two enzymes are short-lived. Uh, the GIP is uh, about two minutes in half-life. The GLB is about five minutes in half-life. They are both destroyed uh, or degraded with the enzyme known as dipeptide, peptidase 4 enzyme. And the products of degradation are excreted through the kidneys. Um, we have two types of uh, incretinomimetics, the oral one, which is DBP4 uh, inhibitors. They are all reacting. And we are going to uh, go now for the, uh, the other type, which is the in, uh, injectable form of incretinomimetics. Um, they were introduced into the market. The first one was exenatide, followed by dulaglutide, liraglutide, semaglutide, and then the last one, which is terzibatide, which is uh, the subject of our talk today. Um, um, incretinomimetics have different mechanisms of action, like I said before. Uh, if we look to the picture, we are going to say that they may cause satiety, uh, decrease appetite uh, on the stomach. They reduce gastric secretion. They delay gastric emptying. They regulate insulin secretion and the insulin synthesis. Uh, GIP. Uh, stimulates the glucagon secretion, while GLB-1 inhibits the glucagon secretion. Uh, GLB-1 is a lipolytic hormone uh, enzyme, 
what GIB is a lipogenic one. They both antagonize each other. GIB stimulates blood flow to um, uh, adipose tissue, increasing the uptake of lipid, uh, improving the uh, metabolism of our lipid profile in our blood. The combined or composite outcome of uh, a, a, an action uh, which is an agonist of both GLB1 and GIB1 is going to cause body weight uh, reduction and uh, blood glucose control. That's why these drugs, uh, our uh, drugs uh, um, attacking uh, the GLB1, what we call GLB1 agonists, were introduced into the market as a line of treatment in type 2 diabetes mellitus long ago. Either uh, uh, apply it subcutaneously every day or uh, once weekly. Terzipatide is uh, the newest molecule in this family. It attacks uh, or it is an agonist of both enzymes GLB1 and GIP1. Uh, the, the use of terzipatide was, uh, was associated with uh, weight loss of 6.2 kilograms more than semaglutide and 14 kilograms approximately 14 milligram, uh, kilograms compared to insulin, long-acting insulin, either insulin degludic or glargi. Now, um, we are going in, 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 the, in this study to see the uh, studies which involves the uh, incretin, uh, injectable incretin semaglutide, terzipatide, and the uh, clinical applications uh, they are approved for. We know that semaglutide and terzipatide are approved in treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Liraglutide is uh, approved in treatment of type 2, also dioglutide in type 2 diabetes mellitus. But semaglutide, terzipatide, and liraglutide are approved in treatment of obesity. Dioglutide is not approved in treatment of obesity. Uh, if we convert semaglutide to terzipatide, Many studies are involving both drugs, but if we look to the um, uh, non-alcoholic state hepatitis in obstructive sleep apnea in early Alzheimer, uh, some studies involve semaglutide and some other studies involve terzipatide. In the next slide, uh, this uh, article was published in CKG, I think, um, uh, Two, uh, one or two months ago, it discussed uh, another um, another weapon we can use in the armamentarium of nephroprotection, uh, which now have become a, a, a big issue uh, in our daily practice. And now, uh, when another drug is in, uh, and any drug is introduced into the market, now we look for what is beyond. Uh, when SGLT2 were introduced into the market. Uh, they were introduced as um, uh, oral anti-diabetic drugs, and now they are indicated in treatment of CKD and in treatment of heart failure with uh, uh, reduced ejection fraction. Uh, this uh, drug, terzipatide, in the SURPASS-4 trial uh, was uh, shown to have a renoprotective effect. The SURPASS-4 trial is a trial that lasted from uh, 85 to 104 weeks of follow-up. It included 1,995 patients with type 2 diabetes, a PMI more, with, uh, more or equal to 25, with high cardiovascular risk, hypertensive, pre-diabetics, diabetics, with high LDL or high cholesterol. Uh, Tilzipatide was compared to insulin glargin. The primary endpoint was non-inferiority in A1C uh, reductions. The kidney outcomes were secondary endpoints. In all the parameters uh, regarding the kidney outcomes, either in the estimated GFR categories, in albuminuria categories, uh, terzipatide was found to be nephroprotective. It decreased the microalbuminuria. It prevented kidney slopes, kidney death, reaching in the stage kidney disease, or a decrease of more than 40% in the GFR. That's why. They found uh, th this uh, uh, diagram uh, that when creatine terzipatide was recently approved to improve glycemic control in type 2 diabetes, in the surpass for uh, post hoc analysis, terzipatide offered kidney protection as compared with insulin glargine for type 2 diabetes participants with CKD 
and also for participants with estimated GFR G1 or G2 with albuminuria A1. And they concluded at the end of the study that the potential uh, kidney protective effects of twin cretin should be characterized in detail from the points of view of both CKD prevention and CKD treatment. I think uh, in the next few months or years, um, a lot of publications is going to uh, address the issue of tetrahydrate safety uh, on the cardiovascular system, on the uh, as arena protective. Now they are going for the triple attack: uh, a GIP, a GLB, and a glucagon uh, agonist too. Uh, I think it's in phase three trial um, uh, now. Uh, now, yeah. If we go to the our third topic today, will be saline versus balanced solution. I uh, have chosen this picture to demonstrate the uh, infinite struggle uh, about which type of fluid to choose. Um, if we look to the available fluids we use in our daily clinical practice, we have the normal saline, the most widely known and the most widely used solution crystalloid all over the world. The 0.9 solution is not a normal saline. It's an abnormal saline. The osmolarity is higher than the uh, uh, plasma osmolarity. The pH is acidotic. Uh, the use of normal saline is associated with hyperkalemic metabolic acidosis. And the prolonged normal saline infusion usually causes what we know as chloride infusion syndrome, causing uh, leakage of the endothelium, edema at the site of infusion, and may cause AKI. Still, normal saline is the best fluid to be used in traumatic brain injury. Sodium lactate, I, I did not use uh, so, sodium lactate uh, before, but sodium lactate differs from normal saline that chloride is replaced by another anion which is lactate. Linger lactate uh, is supposed to be one of the best replaceable uh, replacement solutions, especially in cases of sepsis. Lactate is going to be uh, transformed into uh, um, bicarbonate. Linger acetate is not preferable in cases of advanced uh, kidney disease or liver disease. Uh, plasma light and the A and plasma light 148, uh, 148 are also uh, 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 um, uh, uh, balanced solutions that may be used with different pH uh, characteristics. Um, if we are dealing with a case of hemodynamic uh, instability in cases of circulatory shock, the usually process we go through is to assess the cause of instability. Um, if we have um, rapid assessment by bedside echocardiogram, which is uh, abbreviated as RACE, this would be uh, very helpful. And it's one of the uh, point of care ultrasound in, in uh, a shock patient. The aim is to maintain an acceptable uh, blood pressure of 60, uh, mean arterial blood pressure of 60 to 65. We could use an isotonic crystalloid like Ringer lactate if available or normal saline if Ringer lactate uh, is not available. Of course, to support circulation of fluid re replacement or support is not adequate is to use or to start an inotrope or a vasopressor. We can use albumin in cases of sepsis or liver cirrhosis. Uh, when the uh, condition of the patient is optimized, we can um, improve, decrease the rate of fluid uh, administration and withdraw the uh, inotrope or vasopressor and continue uh, monitoring of the patient. So what are the hazards of having uh, or giving the saline? Saline uh, have too much sodium, it will cause hypernatremia, too much chloride causing hypercholinemic acidosis and decreasing the pH. Uh, these effects may impact the cardiovascular uh, system, causing inflammation, hypotension, uh, uh, vasoconstriction, uh, endothelial injury, and on the kidney, it may cause metabolic acidosis, renal artery vasoconstriction, uh, kidney injury, and the increase in requirement for dialysis. If we go to the studies discussing this important issue, which uh, type of solution to use? Can we use saline or we use the balanced solution? This, uh, this study, the basics study, aimed to study this important issue. Uh, it included an I, uh, ICU patients meeting at least 
uh, one of the following criteria, age more than 65 with high potential, uh, defined as mean arterial blood pressure less than 65, sepsis requiring mechanical ventilation or uh, non-invasive ventilation, oligoric with AKI uh, or with liver cirrhosis or acute liver cell failure. They excluded patients with AKI requiring renal replacement therapy within six hours of admission with severe electrolyte disturbance, suspected or confirmed brain death on palliative or comfort care, uh, uh, or those with a very high serum potassium more than 5.5 milli equivalent per liter. If we compared the basics trial to uh, the other three important trials that discussed the same issue, the split trial, the SMART trial, and the SALT ED trial. SALT ED trial was performed in the emergency department, while the other three trials were in ICU or in ICU patients. The SMART trial, SALT trial, and BASICS trial included very large number of population, 15,000, 13,000, and 11,000, uh, while in the split trial, it uh, only on 2,200 patients. There were many crossovers, crossovers uh, in the application of crystalloid normal saline versus uh, a balanced crystalloid in the split trial, in the SMART trial, in the SALT uh, uh, ED trial, while there was no crossover in the basic trial. The balanced crystalloid used in the split trial uh, and in the SMART trial and in the uh, uh, SALT ED trial was Plasma light 148 uh, lactated ringer, while in the basic trial it was plasma light 148. The primary outcome in the split trial was renal outcome, acute kidney injury. The primary outcome in the basic trial was 90 day survival in all of the four trials. In all of the four trials, they found no difference in uh, uh, between giving. Uh, balanced crystalloid and giving normal saline. In the, uh, this slide, this is a study published in New England Journal of Medicine on 5,000 patients um, uh, grouped into two groups, one receiving normal saline, the other receiving a balanced multi-electrolyte solution. They convert death from any cause at 90 days, newly initiated renal replacement therapy, uh, the mean maximum increase in serum creatinine, the results were comparable in both groups, and they concluded that the use of balanced multi-electrolyte solution in critically ill adults did not result in a lower risk of death or AKI than the use of normal saline. Which leads us to consider that it's the quantity, not the quality that matters, except in cases of hypercholeric changes, we may use a balanced solution is preferred, the normal saline, and in cases of traumatic brain injury, it's preferred to go for the normal saline other than uh, uh, other fluids. Albumin administration may be used in cases of sepsis, in cases of liver cirrhosis, but should be avo avoided in cases of traumatic brain injury. Synthetic colloids, notably the uh, hydroxyethyl starch, known as histrile or volvovin, uh, volvovin, shouldn't be used owing to their unacceptable safety profiles and lack of proven uh, safety uh, benefits over crystalloids. They may cause also AKI. Um, uh, in patients with renal transplantation, an ongoing trial uh, is called better evidence for selecting the transplant fluids, which compares the effects of plasma light versus 0.9 uh, saline percent and, and 9 percent saline on delayed graft function in 800 deceased donor kidney transplant. I have finished um, my three topics, uh, and uh, uh, yani, uh, uh, I welcome any discussion or any questions. Thank you, Professor Ahmed, for these highly related uh, three topics in a very concise and uh, uh, Global and very concise and comprehensive way. And uh, Professor Said. Yes, Professor Yasser. Yes. Huh. Uh, comprehensive uh, discussion of these three recent, uh, recently published uh, topics, hot topics. 
And in the meantime, uh, I just uh, we want to comment regarding the first topic regarding this uh, pseudo toxicity of uh, these antibiotics you mentioned. Uh, just I would like to ask, is it a, a competition or a pseudo toxicity due to uh, lab error? I mean, in the meantime, it is uh, through this uh, affection of this enzymatic uh, assay of creatinine or Jeff's way or this calorimetric, I mean, assay of uh, creatinine. And second question is, what about the uh, elevation of serum uh, bilirubin and the effect on uh, creatinine. This is uh, regarding the first question, regarding the first uh, uh, presentation. You may answer, please, Dr. Uh, Ahmed. Thank you, Dr. Said, for your comments. Um, um, regarding the first part of your question, uh, is it competition or interfering with the uh, enzymatic or GIFS method of measure, measuring serum creatinine? The reports and the evidence literature uh, reports that vancomycin, pepracel, and tazobactam compete with the organic acid transporter one and three in the renal tubules, and they also down regulate it. So they decrease uh, creatinine secretion in the proximal convoluted tubule. Uh, there is no mention of interfering with the enzymatic or the GIFS method of measuring serum creatinine. Okay. Regarding the second part, uh, uh, to clarify, do you mean the effect of um, increased serum bilirubin on the serum creatinine? Yes, yes. Uh, also, uh, hyperbilirubinemia may interfere with the calorimetric method of measuring serum creatinine. Uh, this is in addition to bilirubin toxicity to the kidney. Um, mild elevations, uh, sorry, severe elevations of serum bilirubin may interfere with the measurement of serum, of serum creatinine too. Uh, not competition, but interference with the uh, methods of measurement. So it will give false high creatine false high or, false, creatine. or false low creatine? Um, uh, I think false low serum creatine. False low serum creatine. Uh, false low. Okay. Uh, if there is any question from the audience, uh, uh, they can... Excuse me. Excuse me, Professor Saeed. Uh, Professor Ahmed, the, this elevation of serum creatinine, I think what we know as worsening renal function, it is simply increasing serum creatinine, uh, not the full, flow, uh, full syndrome of acute kidney injury. And it represents, as you said, it is a stage one rifle, not uh, passing to other stages and only an injury pattern. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this is my comment, and this is the importance, and I would like to thank you to illustrate this point. Not all, every elevation of serum creatinine is considered an acute kidney injury. And another important point you mentioned in this first topic is the importance of uh, antibiotics in blocking the tubular secretion, especially kephalosporins, blocking the tubular secretion, making a false rise of serum creatinine. What resembles, gives a picture of acute elevation of serum of uh, serum creatinine. And for me, uh, in, uh, I, I met many patients that their serum creatinine went back to their baseline level after withdrawal or uh, completing their antibiotic course. And it was not a uh, full blown picture of acute kidney injury, of course, was just elevation of simple uh, serum creatinine, not the syndrome of acute kidney injury. So thank you very much for illustrating this point. Uh, we thank have. Uh, we have Professor Riyad Saeed with us. Uh, please, Professor Riyad, unmute yourself. Oh. Hello, Mr. Khir. It was a really nice discussion about you know this antibiotic related, but it's very difficult for me to say that when you have rising serum creatinine at the time when you are giving some nephrotoxic agent, not to call it acute kidney injury. Well, there is an acute deterioration of kidney injury and uh, the time frame of what you are doing, it indicates there is worsening of the kidney function. 
Is it lab error or not lab error? To me, I think there is a right serum creatinine from baseline. By definition, it has to be called acute kidney injury. It's a drug related. And when you stop the medication, things will go back to normal. But really for the young uh, nephrologists who will listen to us, if they hear this really, well, so what, what, what's the definition of acute kidney injury is going to be? You have a yeah. drug which is known to be potentially toxic and has been given and your serum creatine has risen up. And what are you going to call it? Uh, you're going to call it acute kidney injury. Uh, so uh, you should check levels. And we have a good, you know, I'll say in the last couple of years, we have VANCO level uh, at one point really, even among the, uh, with the practice of the uh, infectious disease guy, VANCO level reached around 50 and 60 with acute kidney injury. Stopping the drug within three, four days, kidney function returned back to normal. So really uh, the definition, we have to be, you know, just strict to the definition of acute kidney injury. That's my view. I don't know what about uh, Dr. Khalees, what he thinks about this. I do agree with you, Professor Riyad, 100%. We should rule out or in acute kidney injury once serum creatinine is elevated. Whatever the patient is receiving uh, a nephrotoxic medication or medication can, by a way or another, raise serum creatinine falsely or what's called pseudo uh, hypercreatinemia. But at the beginning, we should rule out uh, AKI because uh, uh, the common is common. We, so we should rule out the nephrotoxicity of the medication we are using, as you said. I don't know what is the opinion of Professor Yasser. Uh, 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 Professor the, really, the only thing really we have is pseudo elevation. Uh, that's to my knowledge if you have in the past and I'm sure it's still it's valid when you use some uh, medications for example, in a patient with HIV, when you used to introduce sulfamethotrexin, you know, sulfamethotrexazole, you have a normal urea. There is no change in the urea, but your serum creatinine will go up. And we know that region because it's organic transport that has competing with that. You block the secretory part of your creatinine that will come in the urine normally. So you have a little bit factitiously elevated. That's yeah, drug-related. Yeah. That's usually... It's drug-related, uh, that's not an acute kidney injury, that strictly it's related to the drug because it's blunting the secretion of your creatine. Yes, Professor Riyad, as you said, there are three uh, ways the, the creatinine can be elevated in a false way or factitious or spurious way. And I'm by using drugs or other uh, toxins. For example, decreased secretion of creatinine, as you said, the trimesopreme, cimetidine, ranitidine, as Professor Ahmed mentioned, or interference with the serum assay, like cefotexine or flocytosine, or even acetoacetic acid in diabetic ketosidosis. And the last one is the increased creatinine production, like increased intake of uh, cooked meat or phenofibrate, especially in the transplant patient, and the last but not least, the rhabdomyolysis. So this can lead in a way or another to pseudo toxicity of pseudo elevation of serum creatinine. But again and again, we should rule out uh, uh, AKI before we decide that it's, it's pseudo toxicity. Uh, excuse me, Professor Saeed. Uh, excuse me, Professor Saeed. Yeah. To comment on this point, this, uh, the, the, uh, the con this picture is not that absolute. Uh, we are to balance weight against uh, benefits against risks. Yeah. The, the story resembles what we usually meet with uh, RAS blocker. Uh, if we give uh, RAS blockers, we may find the elevation of serum creatinine. And by definition, it is acute kidney injury, but sure. we will get a benefit. We will get a benefit from this, and we are to continue with these drugs as much as we can. So far, I, I think we are in a, still in a state of risk stage one rifle and know the the, the, the uh, full prone picture of acute kidney injury especially the urine output it is still not that affected i think and we are gaining a benefit from the drug i think we are to consider before we stop this drug this, right, is, exactly. the nephrotoxic, well, this is with the nephrotoxic drug this is the picture this is the uh, story with a nephrotoxic drug yeah exactly the, doctor, other, doctor. the elevation with another drug that is not nephrotoxic, which is factitious elevation due to yeah, yeah. pharmacokinetic affection, it's totally different. We can 
uh, know that it is that it's in a pharmacokinetic effect and not acute kidney injury, of course. But this balance should be thought in, in the case of an toxic drug, as Professor Riyad said, with the use of vancomycin, for example, and what resembles we do in uh, with race rest block. Uh, we should we benefit against uh, risks. So far, we are getting a benefit from the drug and still some elevation of serum creatinine with no full blown picture, no uh, affection of urine output, no progressive increase of serum creatinine. I think for me, we, shall, we should think before we stop this drug completely, we should gain the weight to gain more benefits. If we go through passing through stages upwise, so in this state, I totally agree with you, we are to stop the drug and to consider it a nephrotoxic condition. This is my point of view. Uh, as, you said, as, as, you, as you said, Professor Yasser, uh, I totally agree with you and Professor Riyad, of course. The, the rationale in, in the paper I, I showed, um, or the, according to the authors, that vancomycin with Brazilian tazobactam combination is very effective in cases of seriously ill patient and severely uh, septic patients. Uh, they are arguing that discontinuing this drug could uh, cause increase in the microbial uh, resistance, number one. Two, the patients need who, who, who needs this combination uh, will surely be um, uh, uh, in, in a bad condition if they didn't receive it. So they argued against the fact that the use of vancomycin uh, plus peprocillin and tazobactam is nephrotoxic. Of course, like, like, like Professor uh, Said said, and uh, like you said, sir, we should exclude all other um, uh, comorbidities, other cofactors, other uh, nephrotoxic drugs before giving a different diagnosis of AKR. That's why um, um, this slide I show now, the risk recognition response is very important. Um, uh, we should study the clinical scenario of the patient urine output of the patient. The follow-up of daily serum creatinine of the patient is, is um, uh, I think, one of the clues to determine uh, is it uh, gradually increasing, progressively increasing, or just a mild increase, and eventually the patient outcome and uh, uh, to weigh the benefits and risks of giving or stopping the uh, drug accused of causing increase in serum creatinine. Yes, but, Professor. You know, you, you know, you have way to look at it. You have a drug level, and I'm sure you'll be able to measure vancomycin level. And yes. our target around, you know, don't forget any drug that you can measure level should be reused. And yes. our targets for, tar for yes. vanco level should be up to 2025, you know, 2022. But if you have it more than that, well, I yeah. think you cannot really call it uh, something else. The same yes. thing that yes. as mentioned with AC inhibitors stopping it, what we are doing nowadays with SGL2 inhibitors. You know, there is an increased initial rise in serum creatinine that we see. We don't stop the drug. We know that this is hemodynamically mediated. We call it hemodynamically mediated change with AC inhibitor or with uh, ARBs or with SGL2 inhibitors. We continue our medication. We are sure that it would really, within short periods of time, it will come back. But that's different from toxicity of medication. That's totally yeah. different. By the way, Professor Yasser and Professor Riyad, Professor Abdelwab, regarding the S or ARBs, uh, this category of patient who has this, uh, raised serum creatinine within 30 or 25% of the baseline, we consider them as an innocent phenomena and we continue with the medication. But yes. even there is a covert study about these patient versus whom they have no raised any serum creatinine from the baseline, they found that they increased the risk of mortality 10%. But as Professor Riyad said, it doesn't mean we should stop this medication like this SGL2 inhibitor because uh, we uh, balance between the risk and the benefit or the cost and the benefit. So uh, not every drug raising serum creatinine a little bit, we should stop, except if it is a non-nephrotoxic drug or raised serum creatinine beyond the recommended level in the literature. Thank you, Dr. Saeed. Thank you yes, for your yes. comment. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Khaled Abu Zaid. Uh... Assalamu alaikum. Dr. Khaled. Alaikum assalam. 
Oh. Thank you, Prof. Ahmed, for uh, this elegant presentation and for a comment from our professors. As, as, as regard your, uh, your uh, first paper, you already included cystatin C, and I think yes. that is the golden rule now. Serum creatinine, I consider serum, serum creatinine as a false evaluation for the renal function. It's not a good indicator for the renal function in many cases. That's why serum cystatin C, we have an experience to use a cystatin C since now about uh, seven to eight years. It gives us a good clue and a very rapid test for evaluation of the GFR. But at the end of the day, we still depend on the serum creatinine for evaluation for the drug dosing and, and so on. And so co-growth and gold, CKD, maybe ABI and, and a lot of MDRD and a lot of uh, evaluation equations still depending on the serum creatinine. Even serum creatinine, as you as you show as you shown us, this uh, some drugs is affecting the level like uh, vancomycin and the tazobactam. Yes, that's why that's why I can consider this drug is safe, even with rising the serum creatinine. But I think it's not in this condition with a patient with um, a lot of comorbidities, sepsis and dehydration and ventilation and a lot of co co comorbidities, comorbid factors. But I think if we're depending on another factor, evaluating the GFR like serum cystatin C or Nagal, it can give us a good clue if we can continue in this medication or stop this medication. If, we, if our kidney is already affected or not affected. That's why serum creatinine, alone, serum creatinine alone is not a marker, or is not a good marker for evaluation and for follow up of those populations. Exactly. I, 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 like, I need, like I need your uh, comments. I need your comments as regards to statin C because actually uh, all of us are forgetting how to evaluate the GFR and depending on the serum, still depending on the serum creatinine. I, I need actually, your comments. This is, uh, thanks Dr. Khaled for your comment. This is actually what the authors have done. <coughs> we convert cystatin C to creatinine. They found that in the period of increased serum creatinine, there was, there was no increase in cystatin C or in serum urea. And they yes. have a chosen cystatin C because it's not affected by tubular secretion. It's shorter half-life than serum creatinine. So uh, it's not reasonable that serum creatinine, which is known to, to increase or to, um, to detect AKI late. And that's why we search it for another, uh, 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 another markers like cystatin C and NGAL. Inigal uh, and cystatin C usually rise before serum creatinine rise. And in uh, this case, or in this uh, paper, they found no increase in serum, uh, serum cystatin C in comparison to serum creatinine. Uh, and yes, even they discussed, they discussed the issue of that. They only sampled cystatin C two days after the administration of the antibiotic. And they um, uh, elucidated that um, cystatin C usually rises before creatinine. So if there is increase in serum creatinine and if there is acute kidney injury, cystatin C will rise before uh, creatinine rises. And they found, uh, they didn't find that. Um, yes, I have yes. an experience, a personal experience with cystatin C in a paper I published in patients with coronary artery bypass graft uh, in cabbage patient. Um, cystatin C proved to be more better in detection and in prediction of the prognosis occurrence of AKI and the prognosis of AKI in cabbage patient. Yes, totally agree because the statin C is like inulin dye. It is already presented yes. in all nucleated cell. It's secret, not secreted, it's secret, not affected by the renal tube. You will filter the freely and easily. Really, there is yes. no other factor except some uh, some old ages. Uh, I think some sepsis, some pregnancies. Sepsis with uh, steroid. steroid. Yes, 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 you are right. You are totally right. That's why cystatin C, I think, have to start to replace the evaluation of the actual acute kidney injury, especially in critically ill patient in ICU, it, uh, instead of serum creatinine. Because actually, I think serum creatinine is misleading us to take uh, multiple action without uh, benefits at the end. Uh, it, it, did, it didn't give us a, a, a positive impact for the outcome of what was patient in ICU. Second comment, please, as regards the uh, uh, normal saline, I think normal saline is like metformin. Uh, yeah, and oh, this, yes. this, uh, <laughs> this issue have a lot of debate. Uh, Yes, yes, every now and then normal saline is bad, don't use normal saline, but I think normal saline would be the gold standard to be used as replacement fluid 
for most of our patients, yes, we know all of us as a nephrologist know what is the benefits and the risk of, 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 of normal saline. But at the end of the day, I, I remember well in some patients, especially in the first day post transplant, we are using about 20, it's about up to 30 liters of normal saline. In our patient, especially, the patient started to urinate and have a polyuria without any other any risk, without any problems at all. I think it cannot be given like that, but I, I, I'm sure normal saline is a good fluid for replacement. I, I, I know that most of the surgical one is Ringer lactate, and you have to take yes. care of some patient who is hypercholeremic metabolic acidosis to take care of, especially in the critically ill patient. But I think it, it, fluid replacement have to be individualized. Every patient have his own needs for crystalloids or colloids according to his condition. I'm just asking about the comment for, from you, Dr. Ahmed, or from uh, Dr. Riyad, or, or Prof. Saeed, or Prof. Uh, Yasser, if you have. Uh, uh, um, regarding uh, your first comment, Dr. Khalid, uh, thank you for your comments. Regarding your first comment, I think, uh, of course, we need still need a marker for acute kidney injury other than serum creatinine. But the situation tells us that in spite of long uh, discovery of serum cystatin C long time ago still did not take any part uh, more than serum creatinine in, in our clinical practice. And all other markers in GAL is so long been, have long been discovered. This is due to conflicting results. And usually all most of the studies recommend the use of not a single marker, but use double marker or the two or more markers to detect early what is going on. Is it tubular? Is it glomerular? Is it that? Uh, what, what's going in the kidney? And still serum creatinine, unfortunately, is the one on the top. And we are to use serum creatinine in our clinical practice, waiting for another mark, uh, the markers to take their place. But for me, I'm looking for these markers a long time ago. They did not take, uh, they failed to take a good place in early discovery of kidney function due to many and many uh, uh, many and many uh, problems we all know about and conflicting results of the study. So we are to depend upon serum creatinine. And even our definitions of acute kidney injuries is still based on serum creatinine since 2012 KDIGO uh, guideline. So I think it uh, will not benefit much more from getting serum system. So uh, I, my question is, if, uh, is there is in clinical practice anyone who uh, depends on serum cystatin C in uh, instead of creatinine in detecting acute kidney injury or dealing with acute kidney injury, anyone in his practice? Is, yes, Professor, uh, yes, uh, Professor I, like use it. I use it since the eight yeah, years yeah. now. Eight years now, I still hmm. depending daily in serum cystatin C to evaluate hmm. the GFR. And I hmm. want to give you scenario of one of my cases. Here, creatinine is 12 up to 14. Hmm. And here, hmm. GFR is more than 65. Even I could to try to confirm by DTB and DIMSA and to confirm it, the GFR is still 65 milli per minute. Was and serum creatinine kidney? is 14. Was it acute, was it acute or, or uh, it, chronic? This patient actually is a big scenario because I'm expecting this patient to have multiple myeloma and the patient is still refusing ah. to take a renal biopsy because of financial problems. But actually the patient here, GFR is still oh, 65 yeah. with serum creatinine is 14. GFR yeah. have to be evaluated by some specific uh, uh, you are, markers. You are speaking about the reverse like this. Cystatine gives a higher, not no, no, not lower level reversible. of GFR. Reverse, professor. No, no. Cystatine C giving GFR 65 milli per minute, and here creatinine yes. is still 14. Yes, yes. But there's a big difference, to Professor Khaled. Yes, there is a very, very big difference. Yeah, you will be astonished if you know that the serum urea of this patient is uh, yeah, around the norm. The, oh, only, wow. the only markers in this patient is high is the serum creatinine. It's a very, very, yeah, very astonishing case. And I'm waiting to, to, yeah, to, 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 to take the opportunity to take a renal biopsy to confirm what's happening in this kidney. And you can publish it. Is very interesting. Uh, it, it, it's repeated many times. Serum creatinine yeah. repeated many times over 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 few months, maybe three four months. Was it was it fourteen? Fourteen. One four years. Four, one four one four fourteen one fourteen. Four. Mm. No, no, no 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 fourteen. Arbatash. Fourteen. Yeah, Doctor Yasser. Arbatash. 
14 ملي جرام يعني استابلش ذا كيوكيد دينجر اند يس 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 اند اند سيستاتين سي جافز جافز هاير جي اف ار صح؟ اند رينو جرام اند رينو جرام از 65 نورمال جي اف ار سي وات از سي وات از ذا ديفرنس ذا فيري فيري بيج ديفرنس فيري بيج ديفرنس ذاتس واي ذاتس واي السامغ العربي كان السامغ العربي كان بي يوز تو ريدكشن تو ميك ريدكشن اوف ذا كرياتينين وزاوت اني اكشوال بينيفيتس فور ذا فور ذا كيدني فانكشن فكرياتينين اي ثينك كرياتينين از ا فولس ماركر فور ايفالويشن اوف ذا رينال فانكشن يس يس ات از ا فولس ماركر اند هاز ماني هازرز احنا كلنا متفقين على كده طبعا ما فيش حاجه ات ستيل ستيل وي ديبند اون ذيس وان فور ايفر ستيل وي ديبند اون اور ديفينيشن ان ايرلي ديتكشن ان ايرلي ديتكشن اوف اكيوت كيدني انجري G5, uh, I, think, I think we all use it still depends on serum creatinine. Yes, you are right. You are huh? right. That's a problem. Okay. That's a problem. Okay. Yes. That's a problem. We still depend. This is the only available but marker till now. I, I think, sir, there is a recommendation. If there is doubt about the estimated GFR, we can use cystatin C based equations or we use the cystatin C creatinine based equation. Cystatin C uh, gives more accuracy to the estimation of the GFR. Uh, equations uh, only depending on creatinine. If there is doubt, like the case uh, presented by Dr. Khalid, I think that no, yeah, the astonishing case like that, well, estimation I will use tal cystatin C give a difference. It then a view of the whole thing. Yes, 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 Dr. Ahmed, I totally agree with you. That's why I cannot depend on the serum creatinine even in the chronic patient. Really, in chronic patient, I always evaluate them by cystatin C every three months. I found a big difference between the serum creatinine. Sometimes patient came to us, and I think I'm sure all of you يعني, observe that some patient came sometimes by low serum creatinine, and we, we don't we, know how the chronic... serum creatinine become low, and, and it was seven before, and he came to me this time by three, but the GFR nowadays is ten. And are, there is there is a sentence there is a sentence written in the some boxes before. Sometimes the creatinine will be normal, even the patient losing. More than eighty percent of his renal actual GFR. This, this is uh, we know in, in chronic cases we use on, uh, only you, uh, all of us uses GFR equations and estimated GFR. Usually the the, the difference will result still at the end. The approach yesterday still at the end it depends on the serum creatinine. Yes, still yes, at yes, the end it depends still, on the serum. It depends on correct it. and the correction. The correct finally, the difference make the patient lies within the same stage. يعني لو كان patient from within the same stage three stage four no big difference I don't think that the difference will be that the patient will be for example in stage two by serum creatinine and we if we estimate by another one will be in stage five I think it's a big difference it's difference uh, being uh, serum creatinine and the estimated uh, equations estimated equations will be within lies within the same GFR stage or approaching the early of the uh, the, the next stage that's is So we are in the same area of uh, chronic kidney disease. Uh, well, 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 we are not. We are not asking about those those group of population, those group of patients, because actually, as you know, most of our patients always looking for low serum creatinine, and they are getting any advice from any population to get uh, some uh, some herbals or some medication from outside, away from the nephrologist, to low down slow, low down the serum creatinine. Sometimes the patient okay. with very low serum creatinine, with anorexia, uh, stop uh, meat and stop eating and getting some herbals, his creatinine has gone down. Even the patient came to us by very toxic uremic manifestations with very low GFR and serum creatinine is three or four because he's losing his muscle body weight, his muscle mass is lost already, he stopped uh, eating, Money. have Money. severe Money. anorexia and so on, so on, so That's why creatinine in this condition also is a false marker. We cannot depend on the serum creatinine. You, all of us starting the dialysis with a low serum creatinine in addition to its clinical manifestation. Of course, serum creatinine is no by its hazard, but still... So yeah, let us, yeah. let us yeah. go back, Professor Yasser, Professor Khaled, ah, Professor Abdul okay. to We have two questions on back, the chat. 10 years back, one, one uh, famous article called uh, titled by biomarkers for acute kidney injury. Combining the new silver with the old gold. He means the new silver is statin C and the nigel and so, and the old gold is creatinine. Despite many fallacies of using serum creatinine, but 
unfortunately we are still using it this is this is my is more... point this is my point totally yeah. we yeah. have all aware about the fallacies of serum creatinine yeah. we are all aware by the presence of biomarkers and uh, we can uh, speak about biomarkers in a more than uh, one hour but still yeah, yeah. now serum creatinine is on the top and yeah. thank it, you professor it, it, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have two questions on the chat yeah uh, from uh, dr abdurrahman can we use albumin in resuscitation in sepsis and uh, lc regardless serum albumin level what what do you mean by lc i cannot get this point liver cirrhosis hepatic patients liver cirrhosis hepatic patients in hepatic patients liver cirrhosis in spite of albumin, uh, level. albumin level normal albumin level professor abdurrahman no. Regardless of serum albumin level, no. No, should, it should be in albumin. Ah, hypoalbuminemia in cases of hypoalbuminemia. In cases of, of sepsis, uh, albumin is an acute phase reactant. It's expected mm. to go down. Okay. In cases of sepsis or severe infection, albumin is expected within two days to go down with se severe sepsis. So in cases of... Shut. In in my in my practice, I am going to speak about my practice. I use albumin as a resuscitation in cases of severe sepsis associated with renal shutdown, oliguria, and volume overload. If there is no oliguria or renal shutdown or volume overload, I don't use albumin. Hmm. So you mean to induce the irrespective, albumin. irrespective irrespective of albumin level? Yeah. Again, after checking serum albumin level. If there is normal and, serum, I'm going. I'm not going to add albumin to to um, ah. to the patient. And First, even if, I think if, it's if not going to do anything. Second, it's very expensive. Yes. With normal serum, with normal serum albumin. Yes, I'm not going to add albumin to a patient with normal serum albumin. And if the serum albumin. albumin if serum albumin is low, Liz, I, 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 I consider 3.5 is my landmark. Below 3.5, I usually give serum albumin uh, in a patient with sepsis or a patient with liver cell failure. In, in liver cirrhosis, definitely. Advanced hepatorenal syndrome, especially the, those with the, the rapidly progressive one, hepatorenal syndrome type 1. Uh, acidic patients, oligoric. Uh, who, who needs albumin with uh, intravenous loop diuretics to help for diuresis. Um, uh, this is the, the uh, indications of supplying or um, uh, implementation of albumin administration to a patient with sepsis or with uh, uh, liver cirrhosis. And if, you, if your albumin is considered a negative acute phase reactant, you consider it a true hypoalbuminemia and give albumin? As in case of sepsis, as you mentioned, it's not it's not true. Hypoalbuminemia. It's ah, not true. And in this case, um, you get yet, uh, like I said, sir, if there is an indication to give, uh, and my indication here is uh, uh, overload with oliguri. Okay. If there is no uh, oliguri and there is no volume overload, even with low serum albumin, I will not compensate. Yeah, okay. it is not. You are right, Professor Abdul Wahab, Professor Yasser. It is not 100% evidence based, but it is from yes. the practice, as I said. But still, again and again, it is a hot area of debate. And we cannot say 100% we should or we must give or we must not give. So it is depends on your evaluation, as you said. But up till now, there is no consensus or is, there is no cutoff value to give album or not. I mean, syrup album to give album or not. In, in such situations. So this is my comment. I don't know what is your comment. Yes, uh, I, and Professor Ahmed mentioned this. He said in my practice, I yes, usually yes, get I with, uh, yeah. with oliguria, yes. which, which uh, some uh, may find this uh, somewhat strange. As yeah. we, some can, are afraid to give albumin in cases of oliguria due to fear of overload. But I think if we, we are dialysis is an option, it must be a trial and must uh, should be tried as a method of uh, forced diuresis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the second question from Dr. Ashraf. Ahmed. Dr. Ashraf Ahmed. Yes. One minute. He says that. 
about renal protective effect of incretin, is there a difference between short and long acting compounds? Professor Abdul Wahab. The studies on renal protection of the um, uh, injectable uh, incretins um, mainly uh, were for the tirzepatide, this is the last one, and semaglutide. The older generations like exenatide, um, dulaglutide, and liraglutide, they were compared regarding control of type 2 diabetes, not uh, uh, in the, for the control of uh, uh, or the as a renal protective drugs. Only terzepatide uh, showed renal protective effect in the surpass 4 trial. Um, semaglutide proved to be very effective in decreasing body weight, in controlling the blood glucose, but as renal protective, uh, no literature documented semaglutide as renal protective. Terzepatide um, uh, decreased um, uh, uh, inflammation, decreased the LDL, decreased the cholesterol, uh, controlled the blood glucose, decreased the body weight in a marvelous way, decreased the microalbuminuria. Um, in, in many aspects, uh, terzepatide had renal protective effect. So I think the renal protection, uh, uh, renal protective effect of incretins, uh, according to the evidence we have till date, is uh, for the terzepatide. Okay. Uh, Professor Abdul Wahab, one question regarding this issue of renal protection. Uh, we know all that, uh, we all know that this SGL21 inhibitor and uh, this uh, GLB1 agonist and uh, also this MRAs, uh, mineral corticoid receptor agonist, are all renal protective individually if you use them as uh, evidence based or from the literature. Is there is any uh, uh, randomized control trials combining these three uh, drugs together to combat this CKD or to treat CKD uh, recently published or not yet published? Uh, I don't think this there is something recently published. I, don't, I, I, I haven't read such a thing uh, of a combination of a SGLT2 inhibitor uh, 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 plus um, uh, uh, GLB1, GIB, well, terzepatide combination. But uh, regarding the MRAs, MRAs in the studies involving the MRAs, they were receiving SGLT2 inhibition. And their renal protective effect was um, uh, evident either with SGLT2 or without SGLT2. But, and I think uh, more, more. Uh, yes, but... Uh, it's more effective, uh, uh, I mean. Yes, with this glit, they were more effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there but, is no uh, study combining the three together. Yes, I, I didn't yeah. read a, a trial uh, combining the three drugs together. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, another, or, uh, I think no, more, no more questions. Yeah. And no more. Uh, no more comments, uh, Dr. Said, and the yeah, and, Professor, uh, can uh, we Professor, close? Abu, Professor Abu Zaid just sent this uh, renogram of such patient uh, he mentioned. I think uh, we should. It is very interesting uh, case report. I think it should be published, Professor Khaled. This case, of course. Sure, yeah. Prof. Said. Inshallah, we are preparing, but just getting a renal biopsy first and to confirm from the diagnosis, and Inshallah, we will publish it. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. Good okay, luck. Professor Saeed, uh, yes, sir. we are to close now. Thank yes, you for this very yes, we, uh, thank you for this very interesting session. Thank you, Professor Ahmad, for your uh, very well selected topics and very interesting, very informative, very clinically applied topics. Thank you, sir, for, for the chance. Uh, thank you, and for illustrating them in a very smart way and comprehensive way. Thank you, Professor Saeed, for uh, leading Welcome. this session. And uh, excuse me to close and upon the uh, announce about the coming session by Professor Ahmad al qariai about uh, introduction to kidney genetics. We will start uh, to know about the kidney genetics. And my first lecture will be uh, introduction illustrating the basis and uh, how to deal and how to understand the basics of kidney genetics uh, uh, will be inshallah next
coming Wednesday, 9 p.m. Cairo time. Hope to see you all and meet you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tisbah ala khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.